Way too many organizations talk about best practices. We should be talking about best thinking because it's our thinking that drives everything we do and everything we become. We need people on our team that think better, think healthy, think productively. And one thing I've learned in life, when I think better, I can practice a concept called personal accountability, and that's my core message today. See, the world is of blame. We need to be in the world, not of the world. The world messes with people's thinking. You hire people that come out of a society loaded with victim thinking, loaded with when will someone take care of me, loaded with who done it questions. It's our job to retrain them. Personal accountability in the QBQ is the solution. Hey, you're going to join this center? We don't ask these kinds of questions. You ready? Who dropped the ball? Who missed the deadline? Who made the mistake? Because we don't want to wear the company coat of arms. <laughs> You've probably never seen this, right? What? Does finger pointing and blame cost us? It costs us more than you'll ever see on the bottom line because you can't measure it. See, personal accountability is trainable, but you won't be able to measure the results. You'll just know, wow, my center is so much better when I, the owner, start saying, no excuses. I own the result. Could we return to what works? Personal responsibility, personal accountability, ownership. No more blame. No more victim thinking, no more procrastination. Careful about hiding behind the team. And you know, families are teams. Hey, I don't like my family culture. Well, don't hide behind the others. What can I do to change that family culture? What can I do to help the team move forward? My wife gave me a t-shirt. It says it's all about me. I don't think it was a positive marital statement that day. <laughs> That's what I teach. It's not about the team. It's all about me. Not in a narcissistic sense, but in this sense. I don't want to ever use the team as an excuse for something not getting done. I don't want to hide behind the team. I want to ask, what can I do? See, Karen and I do not have a perfect marriage. I do not have perfect relationships with my seven kids. But what helps is pausing and saying, wait a minute, there must be a QBQ in here somewhere. What can I do? How can I make a difference right now? What, what can I change about me? That's personal accountability. It's not a group thing. It's not something I hold others to. What is personal accountability? Well, it's not a group thing. It's not something I hold others to. Then what is it? Put your pens down. Enjoy the story. I walked into the Rock Bottom Brewery on a Thursday. It was real busy. They put me at a bar stool, no booths or tables available. After I'm sitting for a few minutes, a young man runs by me carrying a big tray of dirty dishes, and he stops, and he looks at me. He says, sir, have you been helped? I said, no, I haven't been, but I'm kind of in a hurry. I just want like a salad and maybe a roll. Well, I can get to that, sir. What would you like to drink? I said, I'll have Diet Coke. It's my favorite. He said, oh, I'm sorry, sir. We only sell Pepsi products. I said, uh, no, thanks. I'll have water and lemon. Great. So he's gone. I'm sitting there. A few minutes later, he's back with the salad and the roll and the water and the lemon. And this is a very key moment in this story. I want you to know something, everybody. I was satisfied. I'm about to give you the secret to customer service for free. Are you ready? True service is doing something for another I didn't have to do, period. If right now we took the time to get a great customer service story from all of you and we peeled that onion, guess what we'd find? There would be a moment, a moment in that story, where somebody did something for you that they what? They didn't have to. That's all it is. So I'm, I'm sitting there at the rock bottom, enjoying my salad, my roll, and my water, and, and my lemon. But see, here's the key. If Boston Market or any other organization wants to have the extra edge, we need people willing to go the extra mile. It doesn't just happen magically. Organizations with the extra edge have people going the extra mile. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, this, this young man decides to go the extra mile. I feel the, the wind of enthusiasm blowing behind my back. The long arm of service stretches over my shoulder and places right next to my plate a 20-ounce bottle of Diet. Diet Coke. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. He's gone. My first thought, hire him. I called him over. I said, 
I thought you didn't sell Coke products. He says, we don't. I, I said, well, where did this come from? Guess what? He says, grocery store around the corner. My Diet Coke came from the grocery store around the corner. Who paid for it? He says, well, I did, sir, just a dollar out of my tip money. <laughs> I'm hiring him for sales now, OK? <laughs> and then I asked him one more question. This is all in, in a moment. It didn't take long. I said, well, how did you have time to go get it? You've been busy. He straightens. He smiles. He says, oh, I didn't go get it, sir. I sent my manager. <laughs> Right now, turn and say to your boss these words, get me a Diet Coke. <laughs> get me a Diet Coke. What a great feeling. I looked up at this guy. He's standing. I'm seated. And I said, why? Why'd you do this? And now he, now he looks sad. His, his countenance falls. He goes, I'm sorry, sir. Didn't you want one? <laughs> oh, let me write that down. Do for customers what we don't have to do, and we will have the extra edge in the marketplace there's nothing new about what I'm teaching right now. But the outstanding organizations excel at it. It was soon time to leave. How many of you had left this young man a really good tip? Yeah, so as my quarters bounced across the bar. <laughs> I came back a month later. I could not forget him. His name was Jacob Miller. I love his last name, don't you? Jacob Mil John Miller, if you didn't know, OK? And I walked in, and I, the hostess greets me. And I said, one for Jacob Miller's section, please. One for wherever Jacob's working, I want to sit there. And she says, oh, I'm sorry. Jacob is no longer. And my mind went crazy. I started thinking these thoughts. You didn't really lose a guy who did not ask, when is the customer going to learn to read the menu? You, you did not really lose a guy who did not ask, why don't I get more training and coaching? And when will that department do its job right? And why don't they pay me more? You lost a guy who did not ask, when is the headquarters going to get us more products to sell? You lost a guy that did not make these three horrible statements. You want to kill an organization? Make these statements. Not my problem, not my department, not my job. He didn't say that. He never, he never even thought, well, it's not my department, it's not my problem, it's not my job. He stopped, he looked at me, he said, sir, how can I help you? I'm thinking, you lost this guy? Now let's go back. I didn't say any of that to her. The mind works very quickly, doesn't it? I said, one for Jacob Miller's section, please. And she says, oh, I'm sorry. Jacob is no longer. And I thought all that, but all I said was this. Ah, uh, don't tell me you lost him. And she says, oh, no, sir. We didn't lose him. We promoted him to management. And I said, management, what a waste. <laughs> See, it's not a waste if he becomes a manager that does what his manager did. See, that manager understood her job. Her job was to lift up Jacob. So Jacob could take care of John, the customer. And so then John could get up on this platform and rave about the rock bottom and what they did for me. Can you imagine getting out of bed in the morning and saying something like this? Today I exist to blame. I'm going to run through my life writing down the names of all the lousy people I know that have not lived up to their commitments. I will begin asking who done it questions so I can indict people, destroy teamwork, drive wedges between colleagues, break down relationships, not solve problems, lessen productivity, kill creativity. This is what finger pointing does. Can you imagine actually asking questions like these? When will they get back to me? When will somebody improve this place? When will they solve the problem? When will I get the answers I need to make a decision? When will we find good people? When will he give us the vision? How about this one? When will somebody clarify my job? And then can you imagine actually standing at the water cooler, asking what I call the water cooler huddle question? So, when are they going to tell us what's going on? <laughs> when at that moment, we could have been at our workspace asking, what can I do to contribute? What action can I take right now to make a difference? We call those QBQs. Procrastination, it's the friend of failure. Procrastination is the friend of failure. If you want to fail in life, hey, just get out of bed in the morning and say, when will all those people over there, when we could have just paused and said, well, what can I do today to make a difference? See, the power of the question behind the question, the power of QBQ, the power of personal accountability is it makes me see the world differently. 
No longer do I point fingers, do I whine, do I complain, do I blame, do I put stuff off. And more and more I take initiative, I take ownership, and I start saying, how can I today be my best? What can I do to practice personal responsibility? If you're training on customer service and team building and teamwork and management skills and selling technique and all that, but you're not first building in a base of personal accountability into your culture, you have no rock to stand on. We can train a person to be a better customer service person, a better salesperson, a better people manager all day long. But for success, we need a base, a foundation called personal accountability. The core issue in any organization that wants to be outstanding is the individual. Because teams are made up of individuals. And if we don't recognize that, we start hiding behind the team. Can you imagine hiding behind the team with language like this? Well, the team didn't get it done. The team didn't have enough resources. The team wasn't committed. Management didn't give the team a clear mission or vision. But the team will only be as good as the pillars upon which it stands. And those pillars are named Tom and Susan and Kirsten and Dick and Joe. Those are the pillars, people. And it is amazing what the team can do when people start practicing personal accountability. QBQs do not begin with why. Have you ever heard questions like these? Why is this happening to me? Why don't they support me more? Why don't I ever get a break? Why don't I get paid more? Why don't they increase our benefits? Why don't others care as much as I care? Why can't we find good people? Questions that begin with why and have a poor me tone, they take me straight to victim thinking. When I play victim, who am I serving? Careful with your answer. When I play victim, who am I serving? Nobody. Not even who? Not even myself. If you could change one thing to enhance the effectiveness of your operation, what would you change? Most people come out with the P's. Programs, policies, pricing, procedures, processes, people, more people, less people, different people. And one guy wrote down Pepsi. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. He submits a three by five card to me. He says, John, if we could just switch the Coke machine in the break room to Pepsi. Life would be great around our organization. How many of you think that man has some really big dreams? Raise your hand. <laughs> what was the question? What's the one thing you would change to enhance the effectiveness of your organization? OK. I've asked that question for a long time. And nobody has ever said, oh, time out, John. Time out. I'm just going to go back to my office, my cubicle, my car, my home office, wherever I work. And I'm just going to fix me. I'm just going to go home, go back to work, and work on me. I'll see, if I could just change me, that would impact the organization. Where did I get this material from you? 10,000 hours of workshops with really good people, and we would basically ask people, so how do we improve this place? And the flip chart would fill with ideas. So much creativity. It would just be loaded. We would be scribbling on the flip chart for an hour with ways to improve the organization. Nobody ever just said, me. I'm going to work on me. What can I do to change me?